Now this video is the first of a four-part series, and in this first video, we show you how to quickly measure your lathe's travel, and then we examine all the parts and pieces that come as part of your magnetic scale kit. In part two, we install the cross slide scale. In part three, we install the carriage scale. And finally, in part four, we install the display head and then go through all the initial steps necessary to get the kit up and running. All right, so let's get back to our lathe. Hi, and welcome to the Drill Pro segment on installing a digital readout. Today's installation involves mounting the new DROPROS Electronica Magnetic Scales onto a gunsmith lathe. Now, in the past, mounting scales onto a lathe was a difficult, time-consuming process. But because our new magnetic scales are a fraction the size of either traditional glass or inductive ball scales, and a whole lot simpler to mount, we're going to be finished in a fraction of the time it used to take us before. So let's go ahead and take a look at our lathe and see exactly what I'm talking about. Let's start with the cross slide scale first. For the cross slide, typically we mount the scale to the right side of the carriage. Now let's take a look at why this is true. On the left side, at first glance, we see a nice smooth machine surface. Unfortunately, the steady rest mounts directly to the left side of the cross slide right here using these two holes and therefore it makes the space unusable. Additionally, mounting a scale on the headstock side of the cross slide increases the possibility of damage due to drop tools, projects, or chucks. So let's take a look at the right side of the cross slide. And here we can see that it too has a nice smooth machine surface that we could mount to. And with the addition of being further away from drop parts or chucks, this is why the right side of the cross slide is where most scales end up being mounted. Now we do have a video called Sizing a Lathe, but for those who haven't seen it, let's quickly run through on how to find the travels of our machine. First, we bring the cross slide to the full front or forward position. and then make a mark between the cross slide and the carriage. Next, we run the cross slide to the rear, and then measure between the two marks. And we can see the total cross slide travel is six and a half inches. Now for the carriage travel, we first need to run the carriage all the way to the headstock side of the lathe. Of course, don't forget to bring the cross slide forward so you don't hit that on the chuck. And now that we've moved the carriage all the way to the headstock side, we make a mark to the left of the apron, like this. So next, we need to move the carriage to the tailstock end of the lathe. And finally, measure between the mark we made previously and the side of the apron. And it looks like we've got a carriage travel of about 29 and a half inches. So to summarize, we need a lathe kit that has travels of at least six and a half by 29 and a half inches. Now the smallest magnetic lathe kit DROPROS currently offers is an eight by 40 inch lathe kit, which is fine because if we have to, we can easily shorten or cut magnetic scales to exactly the length we need. Remember, with magnetic kits, all we really need to be concerned about is that the travels of the kit exceed the travels of our machine. Okay, so let's take a look at an 8x40 lathe kit. Okay, so here's an 8x40 lathe kit. Let's go ahead and take it out of the box and see exactly what we've got. The first thing that we see is a foam protective pad. Put that to the rear. Here we have the installation instructions. And looking into the box, 
we see the operator's manual with the power cord. Here we have a couple of the scale boxes. This would be the shorter scale, so this would be the cross slide scale or the X axis. Here's the Z axis scale or the carriage. Over on the right side of the box, we have the display box. I'll set this over here. And then we have an assortment of bracket boxes. You can see this says lathe mounting kit. There's another box of brackets. And then lastly, the single arm stand. So, and then this here is just a, a dummy box for packing. So, we don't need any of this. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so here we are with everything out of the box. Let's go ahead and dig a little bit deeper. Obviously, this is, as I said, the shorter of the scales. So, this would be the cross slide scale. As we open this up, we can see the scale cover. And then we have a bag of mounting hardware. We have the cross slide scale itself. And then we have a bag with the reader head and the cable joining it to the display. Now the carriage scale is exactly identical, obviously, but it's just a little bit longer. So we'll leave that in the box. Over here we have the display. And you can see this is an EL400 with a cover, a protective cover. And then also we have a, I don't know if you can see this in the, if the camera picks this up or not, but there's a protective film on the front of this display and also on this keyboard over here. Okay, so we'll move the cross slide scale over there for the moment. This is the pouch that came uh, with the display itself. We'll go ahead and open that up. And in this pouch, we've got two plastic bags. One is the grounding kit for the display. And then the second one is the EL400. It says mounting hardware. This is basically for mounting the display to the single arm. Now, this arm is over here. And you can see single arm stand. Let's go ahead and open up this box. And in here, we can see that we have the mounting arm for mounting the display. And then a couple more bags here. This is the bracket mounting arm that would go on the side of your lathe. And then here is the, all the hardware necessary to secure this arm to the end bracket. Okay, so that's the hardware for that. Let's go ahead and put that, we'll deal with that Later, we'll go ahead and put that back. So we've opened up the cross slide scale. Let's go ahead and take a look at all of what's involved in those pouches here. I'll go ahead and open up the first one. And we can see here, we'll start with, this is a calibration certificate for the scale. And then we also have a technical specifications and also some mounting hints on the back of this. So a couple pieces of paper with the scale. The scale itself, the hardware, let's go ahead and pull these open. And again, it's a plethora of bags here. Let's go ahead and dump this guy out. Okay, now here's an easy one to miss. This is the shim that is used for determining the mounting height of the reed head from the scale. And you can see that this is a clear shim inside of a clear bag. So be careful when you take everything apart that you don't toss this out. Okay, so that's the shim. We want to keep that. Uh, this is just a plastic tie for securing the cable as needed. These are called P-clips. These P-clips are for routing and securing the, the reed head cable. And next we have four socket head screws. 
and the longer of these screws are used to fasten the reed head to the reed head bracket and then the shorter two screws, cap screws, are used to fasten the scale to the cross slide. So now would be a real good time. Let's go ahead and open up the cross slide and take a look at the scale. And here we can see the cross slide scale. Uh, probably if you haven't seen one of these before, the first thing that you notice is how incredibly thin they are and extremely low profile. So let's go ahead and take a look at how these bolts interact with this. Now the shorter of these two screws are used to secure the end caps of the scale to your cross slide. So it would fit just like that and secure or bolt to your cross slide. The larger of these two, or the longer of these two rather, cap screws are used to mount the reed head to the reed head bracket. So let's go ahead and take the reed head out now that we're talking about that. So here we have the reed head and the reed head simply goes on the top or glides along the top of the scale like this. And you'll note that I've there's a couple hash marks here on the side of the reed head and also some hash marks on the side of the scale. And those need to be coincidental, not on the same end per se, but on the same side. So this would be correct with these two hash marks together. Now for some reason that you notice that the last two digits of the display are flickering, the reason is, is because the hash marks are not on the same side. As in the case if we mounted it like this, the last two digits would flicker. So remember for later, we want to mount the hash marks on the same side. And then the last packet we've got, it says scale cover mounting hardware, and there's again a couple of cheese head screws. These would be for mounting the scale cover. And now here's a technique, rather than mounting the scale cover to the cross slide and drilling a couple more holes in your cross slide, if you take a look at the scale here, on the end caps there are tapped and threaded holes on either end of the end cap. So really what we'd recommend is to mount this cover to the top of the scale and that way it would preclude you from having to drill a couple of extra holes in your cross slide. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the other bracket boxes. Move everything up to the top here. And we'll start with this. We've got a couple different sets of brackets in here. This bracket set, these are mounting feet. And what these are used for is that if on the back of your lathe you have any sort of castings where the scale, again it'd be the carriage scale, I'll use this as a, as a demonstration, if there's flashing or any sort of casting on the back of your lathe where you can't mount the scale flat against the back, then these feet basically bring the scale or raise the scale up so that it will clear those castings. Now these are optional you don't have to use these castings. If the back of your lathe is smooth and doesn't have any ridges or anything to go over, then of course just simply mount the scale directly to the back of the machine. All right, so those are what those are for. Um, inside this packet, there are a bunch of, there's more hardware here. Um, these cap screws are to mount these brackets to the back of your lathe. And there's also, you'll see some grub screws. These grub screws are to go down these threaded holes here. And if you need to level these pads, then you can use these grub screws. Okay, so those will go back into the box. And then we've got yet another bracket over here. And this bracket is for securing, and hardware, is for securing the reed head to the cross slide of our lathe. 
and this mounts typically underneath the reed head and then the reed head mounts on top and then the cross slide scale mounts to the cross slide and that's typically how that's arranged. And the longer of these two screws that we looked at earlier are to secure the reed head to the reed head bracket and they just simply pass through the reed head like such and secure the reed head bracket. Like that. Okay, so we figured out how that all works. Let's go ahead and look at our last box of hardware. This is a little bit more involved. Let's go ahead and bring all these guys out here. Put that back. And probably easiest to start with this guy. This mounting block, just like the mounting pads we looked at earlier, is optional. Uh, this mounts to the back of our carriage and then this piece right here would mount to it. Take this out of the bag. And you can see that these holes line up like that. We've got another hardware bag that will secure everything together. So let's go ahead and get some out here. I'm not gonna use the washers. You'll, you get the idea here. Just for saving a little bit of time, I'll just put these in without them. Okay, so that's how that secures together. And then this T-bracket here, this T-bracket secures to the underside of here, like such. So let's go ahead and use a couple of these guys to mount that. I'll put that here. Again, just to save time, I'm not gonna be using the washers, but certainly you would if you're doing a, a normal installation. Okay, so that pretty much um, for our Z-axis, uh, this is pretty much how that would arra be arranged. Uh, let me demonstrate again. I'll use my, my cross slide reed head just to give a demonstration of how that would all fit together. And let me go ahead and move all these bags to the side here. Okay, so the reed head would fit down below here, and then these screws would come from the top of the reed head, pass through into the bracket like such. Okay, so that's pretty much, that's the arrangement. That's how that would, would mount on the back of the lathe. And you can see there's a lot of adjustment here. These brackets are really well done. And one thing also that I can say about them is that they're all true and they're really machined quite nicely. Uh, they're powder coated, they're really nice brackets. Um, they're slotted so you have both vertical movement and also uh, in and out movement as needed which will make the installation later a whole lot easier. Okay, so we've taken everything out of the boxes now, but we're a little bit disorganized. So what I wanna do here is let's take a break for a moment. I'll pull some of the boxes, some of the wrapping, get that out of the way, and we'll get a little bit more of an organized look at how everything fits together. Okay, now previously with all the wrappings and the boxes, it might have been a little bit difficult to follow. So we've cleaned up our workbench a little bit. We've got everything out here. The only thing that we haven't put on the bench is the Z-axis scale. But the X-axis scale, the cover, everything that's associated with that is already here. So it would be exactly the same for the Z-axis. So with that said, let's go ahead and have a look at all the parts. Okay, so moving over to our bench here, on the left side we've got the lathe mounting kit and everything that's contained here is basically what's used to mount the Z-axis reed head to the back of the lathe. So here we've got our mounting block, we've got a vertical our adjusting bracket mounts there and then we've got a T-bracket here that mounts to the bottom of this vertical bracket. And of course, all the associated, the cap screws, the washers and lock nuts to assemble all of these pieces 
and also to fasten this mounting block to the back of the lathe. So that's everything that's in this box here. Now moving on to the single arm stand box, you can see the display arm, the display arm end bracket, and all the hardware necessary to mount these to the side of your machine. Now moving on to this last box, you can see that we've got two sets of kits here, or brackets. We've got the plane adjustment bracket and also the simple mounting kit. The simple mounting kit is used to attach the reed head, the cross slide reed head, to the cross slide and consists of this bracket which mounts like this underneath the cross slide and then these two cap screws here which secure this to the bottom half of the carriage and then also you can see there are some grub screws here that are used to tilt or level this bracket. Now these brackets here are used for the ends of the Z scale and they're optional you don't have to use them uh, what they're intended for, if you have any flashing or castings on the back of your lathe that your scale has to be raised over, then you would use these end brackets. And this also includes grub screws, so if you need to tilt or incrementally uh, change the position or level the scale, then you use these grub screws. Now, on the front here of the bench, we've got the, here's our adjustment shim. Again, our calibration certificate, some technical specifications, the operator's manual, and then lastly, the installation manual, and of course, the power cord. Okay, so moving down to the end of the bench, we've got the display head. We also have all the hardware to mount the display head to the mounting arm. We have the cross slide scale, the scale cover, and the hardware to mount that and of course the cross slide reed head and also the hardware to mount the cross slide reed head to the cross slide mounting bracket. And then lastly we've got the hardware here, the P-clips and the cheese head screws to route all the cable appropriately. Okay, so that pretty much concludes everything that's included in the kit and again, just to be clear, we don't have the Z-axis scale because it's identical to the X-axis scale and it would just clutter the workbench a little bit more than we already have. So those are all the parts. It's actually pretty simple when all laid out. Uh, the next thing to do is to start with mounting the cross slide. So as far as the cross slide parts, all I need here is out of the simple mounting kit, I need this bracket here for mounting the cross slide reed head, These, this associated mounting hardware here, and then my cross slide scale, the cover, the reed head, and this associated mounting hardware here. Everything else we can put away and we'll get to it later.